Welcome to the 10th episode in a series where I am upgrading my mini lathe. So by the end of episode 9 I was in a position to seriously start working on the software development and do some longer term testing. Running the lathe for longer periods of time showed that the temperature in the motor compartment would start to get toasty. And then in addition to this problem, the motor RPM sensing became unreliable. This episode is dedicated to upgrading the motor fan and sensor arrangement to solve these problems. So let's get straight to it. So as seen earlier, this is the fan that I was using for the motor and the Hall effect sensor. So with the magnets on the inside there, rotating in front of the Hall effect sensor. And that's been working all right, but I've never been really happy with the cleanliness of the pulses that I've been getting from the Hall effect sensor. And there seems to be some variation as well. And as I've been developing the software, I've noticed that when the system heats up or some other change, the stability also starts to go down. So I I've gotten a little bit sick of that. And so I've decided to move away from the Hall effect sensor, but I'm still going to stick with the eight pulses per rotation on the motor. I also found that this fan, which is very poorly designed, is not really moving much air as well, so it's not really achieving the desired results. So I've gone ahead and I've redesigned the the fan. Yeah, here's the old one. There's a new one. I think the blade profile is much better now, so hopefully we're going to get a bit more air movement. And I've also introduced these little eight slots on the outer edge. You can see the profile there. And so the idea is I'm going to use a interrupter type optical sensor. And this is just one that I've removed out of an old inkjet printer some time ago. So the idea is that we'll mount down here somewhere and should hopefully pick up those gaps. Being optical, it's not going to be susceptible to any magnetic type interference or other weird garbage, and, and the pulses will be very clean. And I've seen with the Chuck optical sensor that, that it's extremely sensitive as well. I think originally I, I was using the whole sensor because I just wanted to try it, because I haven't really used it much before, and, and obviously that's showing in this result because I'm not getting a very good result. But, you know, it's all experience. And the other idea that I was thinking is that it would be more sturdy because it would be less susceptible to dust. But in any case, this is all enclosed, so I don't think it really matters all that much. It doesn't seem like dust is going to be a real issue, and the chuck is optical in any case. I think this is going to be a better way to go. I know I'm going to get a guaranteed clean pulse, as long as I can mount the, uh, the sensor quite accurately and stably to the base here. The outcome is pretty much guaranteed and should be good. So I'm just going to print a new mount here, it's a mount that mounts the ESC and the Hall Effect in one, but I'll print a new one that will accommodate this sensor so that it locates it right here. So I modified the little sensor that I got out of the inkjet printer, this is a pretty minor modification. There's no passive components on this board, it was only really the sensor going to a connector here. The connector on the top here is going to be in the way, so I've removed that. As you can see here, it's actually marked, which is nice, anode cathode emitter collector, emitter collector, and cathode. For the LED I've added a 300 ohm resistor in line so that it can be driven directly from 5 volts and I added a 10k pull-up resistor to the collector side of the opto sensor. So I've also added the connector on the end here so I can easily connect and remove it as well and that should be well out of the way now of the rotation so this can sit very close on here and nothing will be in the way or hit. Okay so let's do the test. So normally in the uninterrupted state you can see it's 0.2 volts. Obviously the transistor in the optic glare is pulling the pull-up resistor down very well so 0.2 volts. Originally I put a 5k resistor and I found it was around about 2 volts it's a little bit too high so I increased that back to 10k which probably makes sense it seems like a typical value and uh, yeah we're getting a good uh, low state of 0.2 so if we interrupt that now we can see it'll pop straight up to 5 and as we rotate around to the slot and there seems to be, if I push it right deep so it's hitting we see this 0.2 and if I pull up slightly 1 mil, 2 mil yeah so around over here we start getting the redrop so if, we, if, we, if we're too far away you know if we're around about here still getting signal there yeah, so I think it's pretty, it's got a lot of tolerance, so it shouldn't have to be too critical. So here is the EC mount which I've reprinted, and I've added another piece here which mounts the sensor. It's a bit easier to see here. I've got this sensor which I've recycled, but, you know, it's quite easy to probably make one of these sensors if you had to. I see they're easily on sale on the internet, or you could just use really just about anything that, that does the same thing. 
This is pretty good because it had a reasonably wide gap which uh, means it can suffer a little bit of movement without it hitting and the position is, is a little bit high as well so I think it's going to work out pretty well and obviously I have the mirror image of that for mounting the ESC it has the screws for mounting the sensor but obviously it's irrelevant for this but yeah so I'll mount the temperature sensor again on the top here so that it will be at the top of the motor compartment to measure the temperature so here's the motor pack now reassembled uh, ready to go in I just see the power connector and the data connector for the motor pack the new fan uh, I think that hopefully will provide a little bit better circulation than the last one the last one didn't seem to be moving much air at all we'll see it's just a bit of a guess again but I think the profile looks a little bit more classical so that should be good we can see here the speed sensor is now switched to this optical style anyway you can just see there's a gap there and the gaps are about a millimeter all around so I think there's going to be no way that's going to impact and uh, two new mounts I just use some of this garbage tie here this string stuff it's just a string I don't know how temperature resistant it is or flammable it is but I think it's no worse than a cable tie it's definitely a lot easier than a cable tie you just you can see I can just strap it around the base just wrap it two or three times and on this side is the cable limb going out to the outside and as it's orientated uh, this way the temperature sensor here is at the top so there you have it, it looks pretty good I already finished doing some modifications to the control box to remove some of the unnecessary circuitry for the uh, Hall effect sensor so it's exactly the same input circuit path as the opto sensor for the chuck so yeah, see how it goes so I finished the uh, reassembly and I did the belt alignment belt alignment's pretty easy you can just put a, a screwdriver in here and wedge it up or wedge it down using the bracket and align pretty easily and uh, I was doing a test also on the uh, on the new sensor to make sure that it's all working correctly and here we can see it looks really good nice and clean all the way up seems much better than the uh, the whole effect sensor that's for sure and that's about it for this episode after doing some more testing, I found that the motor compartment temperature was reduced by about 3 or 4 degrees Celsius, and that the motor sensing was now rock solid. So I'd call this modification a big success. I don't think the original work we did back in episode 3 was at all a waste. Ultimately this led me down the path to the integrated fan and speed sensing solution, which is working very well. It also made no sense to try and fix the Hall effect sensing, as the optical solution is clearly superior, with cleaner signals and far less components. Hopefully I'll get to play around with the Hall effect sensors in the future, but who knows. So that's about it for now. Stay tuned for the next episode where we'll take a detailed look at the completed mini lathe in operation. I hope to see you then and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see the mini lathe doing some pretty cool things.